All right, so, uh, Jimmy, I mean, let's, let's just start. You've been in Bermuda a few days. Well, what's the objective of, of the trip here this week? Yeah, well, the objective is to set up our base in Bermuda, our home. Uh, we've, it's just been fantastic to get here and feel, you know, the energy and the, the, just the, the welcoming from the Bermudians. It's very, very exciting, I think, for all of us and our families, and, and specifically for us, is setting up where we're hoping to go out and defend the America's Cup. And so we've, it's been great with, with the cooperation of ACBDA, WEDCO, uh, BCM McAlpine, uh, obviously the Premier, and, and of course the local people. It's, uh, we're really excited. Our plan is to be out sailing in the waters behind me on that racetrack 1st of May. So we really need the, you know, to hit that deadline, and that's what we're here, you know, making sure we can uh, try and make that happen. So uh, the team has a little bit more. Just talk what the team activities are over the next few months. You've got a little bit more to wrap up in the States. and then. Yeah, so over the next few months, we have got a training session, our final training session in San Francisco, which is where the current base is. Pack everything up, put it on the ship, and hopefully be ready to go here first of May, launching our boat. And, and that's, a, you know, obviously our team members, designers, engineers, our athletes, uh, their families, the kids, we're, uh, we're actually over here from now, you know, over the next month or so, looking for houses, going to schools, really integrating with the local community. And I can tell you what, it's, um, you know, for me personally, having just gone around the last couple of days, it's, this is going to be the best America's Cup yet. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, you know, the people are really behind it. And um, the Bermudians have got to be, some, I think, some of the most welcoming people in the world. You know, it's... Um, it's just such a great atmosphere and feeling you get when you touch down. Okay, and, and, and the last one for me, just on, on the race course area and the sports side of it, I know you've been out on the water a little bit looking at the great sound. What's it going to be like racing? It looks like an awesome racetrack. Obviously, this is winter time here um, and not when we'll be racing. We'll be racing in June. However, we will be doing our training year-round. And what's great about Bermuda is you can do that seasonally. Uh, but the racetrack looks awesome. I think the fact that everyone's going to be able to see it, it's right in front. People that are used to watching, you know, a cricket match here or a soccer match, it's going to be the same experience. It's going to be like a stadium. You'll be on the sideline. Uh, it'll be right. This whole area here will be interactive for, for, for families, for kids, uh, you know, education. It'll be a really cool atmosphere and you know people will be able to walk around here for free and see it all and that's 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 pretty cool when it comes to watching a sport live so, so testing now back, back in san francisco what, what specifically i mean is this a, the ac45 62 which which boats are you testing? so this will be an ac45s yeah. so be teams testing that we're testing yeah so right. teams are allowed to have the smaller testing boats to you know to to prototype ideas the big boats we will launch sometime around, you know, that's, that's still up in the air, but sometime right. around the end of 2016. Right. And they'll be the boats we race in the America's Cup. And they're uh, foiling as well. They're foiling, yeah. So the, the 45s are really sort of a like a little scale down model. Um, you know, very, very similar and, and fast. You know, these boats will be up there, and that's what we'll race in the pre events on these World Series. But then, yeah, the 62s, they'll come out more towards the end of uh, 2016. And how has the transition been? Because obviously in the last World Series, they were they didn't have the foiling capabilities. They were conventional camera rounds, but now you've got the foils, so a bit of a, bit of a um, tweaking going on. Yeah, I mean, that's what's so cool about the sport. I, I think the quantum leap has been the foiling. I mean, obviously, the, using a rigid wing as a sail is pretty cool, you know, just like an aircraft wing. But the foiling, the fact that the boats now essentially fly on the water, that's what kids want to do. I mean, that's cool. It's fun. It's fast. It's the latest. You know, you do two, three times the wind speed. I mean, you, we're, we're, you know, we're going faster than the cars go on the roads here. So it's, um, it's an awesome thing to be a part of. And for the 45s, it was a natural step to get them wheeling. Are you actually about to, to flying passes? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I ended up... Uh, is, that, is that work for you? <laughs> Obviously, something else. Yeah, mate, I think it, it's amazing with aviation and flying and sailing how similar it is. You know, and I think, and racing, auto racing, in that, for instance, a well-set-up boat or car or plane is uh, means you can, you know, sort of look around more and you can set your, you know, your, your, your energy and your focus on certain things. But, yeah, it's quite interesting with flying because it's all, the, the boats now physically fly and it's all about lift, drag, balance, um, and trying to set up a low drag package. 
do you think coming here, because obviously you're going to have to rig the boat to, to the local conditions here, will that you think be, be much of a challenge? No, I think what's great about Bermuda is there is variation in the weather, you know, it, and, and I think with this racetrack there's going to be heaps of passing opportunities, and for good racing you need passing, you know, you need opportunities there. The great thing about these boats is that you are pushed to the limit physically and on the, like if you make a mistake on these boats, I mean there's consequences, um, and you get punished for mistakes, but that's how high level sport is and that's how it should be. Um, but the, the conditions I think are awesome because it's it's always going to be some variation, and there'll be. And for us, that's another important point to get here early. Get out on the racetrack on what we're viewing as our, you know, essentially becoming our home racetrack, mm -hmm. and uh, and trying to put some hours in and have a step ahead of the other teams there. So the 45s, when the 45s come here, they're going to be in Hamilton. Is that correct, Peter? The, the 45s. World, the World Series is yeah. being ironed out, but for us, we're no, but when you come here, when we come here, we'll be based here. Yeah. So your 45s will be here. We'll be here. Period. We'll be on that racetrack. Right. That's yeah. where we want to spend our time. Okay. You know, we want okay. to get the hours. Of, we want to get a step ahead of these other teams. Right. Um, you know, we're looking for any edge we can get um, to get out there. I mean, these, this is the toughest group of challenges we've ever seen in the history of the event, the, the talent, the level, the resources they've got. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we brought it here and we want to win it. Yeah, you speaking know, of getting, getting the early jump, obviously you see Sir Ben is out there already. That's right. You, and and you're, you're here on land. Yeah, I know, it's <laughs> tough seeing him out there, but yeah. I got out in the water, I was in a power boat, we were out on the racetrack checking it out this morning. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, that's why it's so important for us to get this base set up as soon as we can. We're, our team, all the guys, they're ready, they want to be here. You know, they want to move here and get here. What's stopping us getting on the water is obviously, you know, we've got to have our facility and our base set up. So um, that's why it's important this week, sitting down with the different parties and uh, making sure that plan can happen. Right, so that thing would have to be ready. You're getting back here in April? Okay. Yeah, the guys you want to be here really in May, so that has to be finished by... That has, that has to be uh, ready I mean, to be It's going to be an ongoing project, May. but yeah, it's, it's got to be. Yeah. It's, right. You know, it's in different steps, but we need this step one plan that we're, we're, we're meeting with these with the different parties who have right. been really, I tell you, accommodating, and they're excited as well. Right. Um, but yeah, it looks achievable. Last few questions. Um, obviously, Ainsley was a part of the team, part of Oracle last time around. You know, how do you approach the next, the, the defense, um, the next defense? You know, knowing that you potentially could be coming up against someone who was on your team, may know some of your your, your secrets. You know, how do you how do you deal with that? Well, I think it's great that we, um, you know, a lot of the sailors have. It's kind of like other like football or, or soccer, where the, the athletes do move around a bit between the campaigns. That's happened again this time. So obviously Ben's, you know, gone and set up his own team. We've had a couple of our key grinders uh, mix around with the other teams as well. But I think that's that's awesome. I mean, we we do this because of competition and because we're pushed. And these challenges are going to push us. And you know, whether it's Ben or whoever we come up against, we've got to be ready to go. You know, um, because they're going to be tough. And as you said, they've all some of them have worked with us in the past. But the fact is, what got it done last time isn't going to be enough. Right. You know, so we've got to outthink. We've got to outlearn, outdesign, outengineer. And essentially, fundamentally, at the end, we've got to outrace and outside of these guys. Right, obviously, there's no guarantee that he may even really get through the challenge. What about the training boats, Nigel? Um, you know, individually, I, I know the guys, I, I spoke to Ruben Kirby, one of your teammates, and um, he said that a lot of the guys have, have um, they sail the morph on their own. Yeah. Uh, is there any other any, any other classes? Uh, there is. There's a lot of smaller classes now because, you know, foiling is the next the next thing in, in, in sailing. And so there's the moth, there's uh, some smaller catamarans called A-class catamarans, uh, some phantom catamarans, like the ones that are similar to Ben's, the one that Ben's sailing. Mm -hmm. So there are some small boats to get out there, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's that's a big thing, because that's what kids want to do now. You know, they, there's obviously some great classes in sailing, but the natural progression is if a kid, you know, it's like watching a, 
you know, the, the NFL or a soccer player, and that's what you want to do what they're doing. So you guys had a foiling camp not, not long ago, but what, what were some of the boats you have? You had yeah, the Moth. We've had the Moths. We've got some uh, what's called some Phantoms, which is like a two-person catamaran that foils, but a smaller one, which is great. You know, you can get out and, and you know less consequences if you capsize it, flip, crash it. What's um, the length? Is it? What's they're it length? eighteen feet. Eighteen feet. Okay. Yep. Um, there's some A-class catamarans, so there are some options in the smaller boats. Okay. For us, though, the best tool we've got until we get our 62 will be the 45s that we'll set up here. They are really like our sort of smaller prototype boat. Um, they're just like a, just a smaller version of what our, our 62 will be. So that's where we're going to spend our time racing and training. How many crew in the end of 45? Well, right now the crew looks to be around five or six. In the 45. In the 45. And then in the 62 will be. 62 will be eight. Will be so eight. The, yeah, so it's quite similar. You know? 72 had what? 10. 72 actually had 11. 11. So I actually think these 62s will, as physical as it was last time, this, this, these 62s are going to be another step. It's something we've never ever seen in the sport. The level this will get to, and the athletes, that the skills that these sailors are going to have to have will be. It'll never be seen before, really, in the sport. I mean, I, I think once people see what they go through, the decision making, the, the physical stress, the actual mental stress, and the environment you're in when you're going that fast, it's um, it's a test. You need the best of the best. You don't need good guys on the boat.